it's Allie and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to talk to you about my recent reads, which are books that I have read recently. And I have quite a few here. I know I just shared some with you not too long ago, but it seems like I've had a lot more reading time. So I've been reading a lot more books lately. So let's go ahead and get started. So my first book, I actually listened to the audiobook, and that is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. And I gave this book four out of five stars. In Grown, we follow Enchanted Jones. Enchanted wants to be a superstar. She wants to be a singer. And she meets Corey Fields when she's doing an audition. She thinks that Corey Fields is her ticket to stardom. But in the very beginning of the book, we find out that Corey Fields is dead. And everything is appointed to Enchanted Jones. So this book was very interesting. It's a lot different than what I typically read, but it was really good. It wasn't my favorite, which is why I didn't give it five out of five stars. But, but overall, it was a really solid book. When I first started reading it, I thought it was going to be a typical contemporary novel about not some not so typical subjects. And it kind of surprised me towards like the middle of the book. It started keeping me guessing about some things, like some things were not may not have been as they seemed so that made it even more interesting it made me more interested in continuing the book now i didn't physically read this book i listened to the audiobook uh when i listened to this book actually when i went up to ohio and when i came back down i had 16 hours going there and 16 hours back to do something with my time so this was the audiobook that i listened to and the audiobook was good. It was my first real try at listening to an audiobook, so I didn't really have anything to compare it to, but it was enjoyable. I don't know if your preference would be to rather read the book or listen to the audiobook. Since this was my first time listening to an audiobook, I didn't really have anything to compare it from. But it's definitely a good book that touches some very sensitive topics, especially in the Me Too movement that is going on right now. There's some things that in this book that I can't believe actually happened to people. And I'm glad that there is a book out there that has kind of brought some light and, and showed some teenagers that maybe if this has happened to them or something similar that they're not alone and they need to talk to someone. So definitely before you start reading this book though, make sure you check the trigger warnings because there is rape and kidnap and different things like that in here. So make sure you check the trigger warnings if you are concerned about any of those things. Next book I have is Sea Witch by Sarah Henning. And this is a prequel story to The Sea Witch from The Little Mermaid. And I was really excited to read this because there's not many books out there about the sea witch, not that I know of anyway. And my sister's favorite animation growing up was The Little Mermaid. So I was interested to see how this ties into that. And I actually surprisingly really enjoyed this book. I gave it four out of five stars. It was slow to start, but it was well worth the wait. I felt like I really connected with the characters in this, especially the main character, Evie. Evie is who becomes the sea witch. And I was just very interested in her stories and the connections that she made with some of the other characters. Now there is some romance in here, some love, and I really enjoyed it. Like the love interest in this book, or I should say interests, were very interesting. And I feel like some books when you read about the romances or you have love interests, you don't always understand why someone has fallen in love with it. Like there's not enough details in the story for that romantic relationship but this book definitely has it and it had me really thinking after it ended like I was really interested in Evie's story and I definitely wanted to hear more of her story I was just I felt heartbroken her you really could feel the love and the loss in this story now the second book this is actually a duology and the second book is Sea Witch Rising and I have mixed feelings about this book so this still has Evie in it, who is our sea witch, but she's kind of on the back burner. She's not necessarily a main character in this book, which was kind of disappointing to me because I really fell in love with Evie and the sea witch. But the new character in here, her name is Runa. So coming from the prequel story of the sea witch in the book, The Sea Witch, we go now into kind of the Little Mermaid story, a retelling of the Little Mermaid. 
this is a very fast paced book like it goes through the plot very quickly we meet quite a few new characters in this book runa being one of them and she's probably the only new character in this story that i was remotely interested in now there is a romance in the story and just like with the first one i said that I was very interested in the love interest and you really could feel that love with within that romantic relationship but that's not the case with this one like this one almost didn't make sense that she fell in love with this person because the story was so fast-paced you didn't get really any information with it and I really thought that this book was really it was just unnecessary I feel like the sea witch should have just been a standalone and leave it at that this was definitely worth the read. This one, not so much. I think I gave this three out of five stars. If you're interested in a prequel Sea Witch story, definitely pick this up, but I would recommend reading this as a standalone unless you were just really interested in reading a Little Mermaid retelling. <clears throat> but like I said, I liked the Little Mermaid animation. I, we watched it a lot when I was little, but I honestly don't think the second book is worth the time to read it. But this one, it definitely is. Definitely pick this up if you're interested in a prequel Sea Witch story. This was really, really good. The next book that I have to talk about is Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. And I also listened to this as an audiobook. And this is a story that's in verse. So it's all poems. And in this book, we follow Will. His brother, Sean, had just been shot and murdered. And in this neighborhood that they're in, they have a rule about if someone is shot and killed, then you have to go find the person that killed them and have your revenge and this book is set over only 60 seconds so will gets in an elevator and he's on his way down with a gun in his back belt this is on the summary so there's no spoilers here but he's going down this elevator getting re ready to kill the man that murdered his brother sorry you might hear my my little one screaming in the background he's playing with the two older ones and he screams about everything he screams when he's mad or when or when he's happy about something. So sorry in advance for if you hear him in the background. This story really reminded me of The Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, just because The Christmas Carol had ghosts that came to visit and kind of made Scrooge think about his actions and what they result in, same concept to that. It's a very interesting story. I would definitely recommend I would definitely recommend listening to the audiobook on it. Now, if you're used to reading poems and you love reading poems, then go ahead and pick up the book. But it was definitely a very interesting experience listening to the audiobook. The author of the book is actually the one that's narrating the story. Now, since I just talked about Long Way Down, I want to talk about the next book that I read, and that is The Poet X. And this is by Elizabeth Acevedo. And this is also in verse, and this is slam poetry. So Elizabeth Acevedo is into slam poetry, and she wrote a book about it. This book is about a Latino teenage girl who is kind of struggling at home. She's struggling with her teenage thoughts that she has and her very Catholic mom who can be very overbearing and not very welcoming to her daughter and how she feels. Mother is very forceful on her thoughts and what she believes is right. So in this story, this Latino teenage girl finds herself by finding slam poetry. Once again, I listened to this as an audiobook and the narrator of this audiobook is Elizabeth Acevedo. And it was so good. I thought that you could really feel the development of the characters, not only the main character, but also the mother and the father, and she also has a twin brother. And you could feel the development of all of those characters throughout the entire story. The poems were very powerful and moving, and there were a few times while I was listening to it that I got chills, I got goosebumps on my arms. Poems are just so good, and they make you really feel and think about what is going on in the story. I gave this book five out of five stars. It was definitely worth the listen. I would definitely suggest the audiobook if you are interested in picking it up. Next book I have is Good Company by Cynthia Diapri Sweeney. And I had picked this up. This is a this is an adult contemporary novel and it is about a married couple and they've been married for a very long time. Their daughter is about to go off to college and Flora, who is the wife, is expecting to have these great memories and adventures with her husband that she's been married to for so long until one day she finds his wedding ring in the bottom of a filing cabinet when he told her many many years ago that he had lost it 
So that's what hooked me to this story. I thought like this plot line sounds really interesting to see the intricacies of their relationship and what happened. But in the whole scheme of things, that was a very, very small part of the story. They summarized this book as that being like the main plot, but that just wasn't the case. We had other characters in the story. To be honest, I did not care about the other characters in here. I skimmed through their chapters, just looking to see if there was anything that I really needed to read. And I wasn't missing anything. This book was very boring. The plot that I picked this book up to read for wasn't, there wasn't much of it in here. Now, this is a character driven book. And I do like some character driven books. There are some character driven books that I very much enjoy. If the characters are interesting, and if I genuinely care about the characters. That wasn't the case with this book. The characters just weren't that interesting. Nothing in here made me interested in the character's story. The only character in here that I was somewhat interested in hearing their thoughts was Flora, who was the wife, just because she was trying to find herself after being in a marriage for so long and being the mother of her daughter and working from home, she was trying to find herself again. So I can kind of relate with that a little bit because as a mom myself and as a stay at home mom too, I feel like a lot of my life is centered around my kids and I absolutely love them. But I'm glad that I found reading again because I have found something that's just, that's not just the kids and I or my husband and I's hobby. It is mine and mine alone. Now, I enjoy reading to the kids and I would enjoy if my husband read too so that we could talk about books too, but it's still something, it's still my hobby, it's still something for myself. So I can kind of get that with this story. But I gave this book two out of five stars. It just wasn't very good. Now you might have another opinion about it. You might like some of the characters in this. I just wasn't very interested in it. Now the last book I have was a five star prediction for me and it is in my reading vlog for five star predictions as well. So if you're interested to hear more about it, go ahead and watch that. But that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And you guys have heard me talk about The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo before. And I really loved that book. I knew that reading Taylor Jenkins Reid book, I would love the story. And oh my gosh, I fell in love with Daisy Jones and the Six. So Daisy Jones is a singer in her own right and The Six is a rock and roll band. And Daisy Jones and the Six joined together to make an unforgettable album named Aurora. Now this is a rock and roll band that's set in the 70s so you can just imagine what's going on in this book but it's set up in interview format and i absolutely love it it's like reading a magazine you can just picture in your head all of the characters like when i was reading this i felt like i was watching a movie like i could see all the characters in my head i could really feel what they were feeling this was so good i can't wait till the tv adaptation comes out on amazon for this actors and actresses that are playing the main characters in this I'm so excited to pick up this book. I give this five out of five stars. If I could give it more stars, I would. So good. It's not a book that I would typically pick up and say, oh, I'm gonna love it, it's about rock and roll. That's not typically my thing. Oh my goodness, so good. Even if it's not your thing, give it a try. It's really good. I heard that the audiobook for this is phenomenal because every character has their own voice. Someone else does the voice for every single one. So I put it on hold at the library. I think it's on hold for like six months. So hopefully I'll get it sooner or maybe I can find it somewhere else that I can listen to it. But I'm definitely gonna give that a listen as well because I've heard that it's so good and I wanna hear the story again. So those are all of my recent reads. Thank you so much for watching my video today. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you wanna be notified when I post new content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.